Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Simply Heal and this is a special episode. Uh, season's greetings to everybody, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And Doc Johnson, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello Sean, hello everyone, Merry Christmas to, to all of you watching uh, right now. And today's program, uh, we're going to be a bit more light-hearted. Uh, what we're going to do is to nap. today we're going to cover the topic of how to treat yourself or basically how to enjoy your holidays uh, healthily. So Doc, you're going to share with us three, three very important guidelines because for cancer patients and for anyone with metabolic syndromes, there are three things that you will need to take note of, which is number one, sodium content, number two, uh, what's that? Uh, fiber. Fiber content. And saturated fat. And saturated fat. So, fat. so, oil. Okay. so yeah. Doc Johnson is going to give you a very comprehensive way where you will be able to select your favorite foods knowing that you meet these parameters. So Doc, let's start with... Fiber, I believe that is the first one. Yeah, so all of you know that I always prescribe a whole food plant-based diet. So that is unprocessed and unrefined. So if it is so, it's very easy because you only have to choose the apple and eat it itself, okay? However, of course, I know it's very difficult and we really love that, uh, you know, processed food, <laughs> you know, attracting you, especially this Christmas. Okay, so now here's, um, I will teach you on how I select the food items in the grocery. Okay, on how I um, on how I identify which is healthy and which is not. Okay, so we have three uh, concepts here. Fiber. How do you know that what you're buying is actually high in fiber? Is it enough? Okay. Number two is uh, to determine if what you are eating is actually low in sodium or low in salt. Because yes, because high... everywhere I see the potato chips are low sodium, yes, no fat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is yes. that true? Yes. We'll, That's we'll take a look later okay. in the program. And the number three is saturated fats or oil. Of course, cancer patients and, you know, um, all other patients, like uh, patients who have metabolic diseases for that matter. Diabetes, yeah, diabetes blood cholesterol. That, uh, high blood cholesterol, cholesterol, chronic kidney disease, you know. We all love our fried foods, okay? Yes, so we do. Which oil is uh, is the better choice to 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 choose, no? Yeah. Or uh, how do you know if this oil is okay for me to consume? Yes. Okay. And how much saturated fats are you? Uh, is okay for you? Okay. So first we go to the fiber. Okay. So a high fiber diet is always very important because a high fiber diet does a lot of wonders, especially when treating chronic. Uh, diseases like cancer, metabolic diseases like diabetes, uh, hypertension, mm. chronic kidney disease. Okay, so there are a lot of benefits with a high fiber diet. Mm. However, of course, we it life would be sad. You know what I mean, I I'll be honest here. Life would be sad if uh, all of you all you're eating is a uh, salad, salad, salad. So you have to have a little bit of a uh, and, and I, I got to see this because I I had a lunch with Doc Jansen and his family, uh, and I saw Doc Jansen eating delicious food. So he also <laughs> Christmas season he also breaks a, away a little. Yes, so yes. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. If you go on a supermarket, no, okay, you are faced with an item. Okay, you let's say for example you want to eat bread. Okay, so how do you know if this the, bread if this bread has enough fiber in it that it will be good or safe to, safe to eat to or eat. less less yeah. unhealthy? Yes. Okay. So I always look at the total carbohydrate to fiber ratio. Okay. Okay. So here is what it looks like. Now here's an example. Okay? Mm. So this product. Are, is a uh, ground flax seeds. Mm. Okay, very so, delicious. Yeah, very delicious. So, how do we know that if this product has enough fiber in it? So please take a look at the nutrition facts of this uh, food item. So take a look at the total carbohydrates. Mm. The total carbohydrates is eleven grams. Yes. Okay. Next is look at dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is nine grams. Okay. <coughs> so what you need to do is to divide total carbohydrates by the fiber okay so that would be 11 grams divided by nine, nine grams so the answer please get is... your calculators yeah <laughs> and compute for yourself okay so the answer is 1.2 okay is 1.2 less than 5 yes it is yes so this means that this food item has enough fiber in it well i cheated because Flax seeds. This food item is actually a whole food. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is one of the this is one of the uh, benefits of it. Now let's actually take a look at a highly processed food. 
Oh, our okay. favorite potato <laughs> chips. All right. Potato chips. Okay, so please take a look. Do the same thing. Okay? Look at the total carbohydrates of Lay's potato chips. It's how much? 15 grams. Yes. Dietary fiber is what? One, One gram. gram. Yeah. Of course, there will be some fiber in it because it's potatoes. Okay? Yes. However, it is highly processed already. That's why you have so few fiber. And the fiber in potato is actually found on its skin. Oh, so most of this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. So, when you eat Lay's potato chips, you don't see any potato skin in there, right? <laughs> okay. Ah, that's why. And the, and, the, and the total carbohydrates divided by dietary fiber is 15. Mm -hmm. That is three times our target. Our, our target, target is only limit. five. Okay. So, um, here's another thing, no? If you find it that uh, your overall diet is really lacking in fiber, and you really find yourself to uh, hate plant foods, <laughs> you <can eat> vegetables, <laughs> here's another solution. You can actually um, buy a fiber supplement, di dietary fiber supplement like Cleansing Plus. Mm. So with Cleansing Plus, here, this is its nutrition facts. So take a look again at its dietary fiber. Okay, I want you to compute the, the car total carbohydrate to fiber ratio of Cleansing Plus. Mm. Take a look at the car total carbohydrates. Take a look at the dietary fiber. Divide it. Okay, see what you get. Wow. Okay. Okay. So there you yeah, go. There you go. That's your proof. Now, now next to the very important part because uh, during Christmas we eat ham. Uh, ham is full of salt. Sodium. Yes, it's very uh, high in sausages salt. and all these. Mm -hmm. So sodium is so important for those with high blood pressure, uh, uh, chronic illnesses. So uh, doc, how do you know whether a food is low sodium or not? Okay. Now. This is very important, okay? Because for those of you who are who are hypertensive and who want to prevent becoming hypertension, because someone uh, it, hypertension is just very prominent in the family, mm. okay? Uh, very prevalent in the family, okay? So here are the limits for the general population, um, for healthy individuals. The limit for uh, for sodium intake per day is two thousand three hundred milligrams. Mm. That is equivalent to one teaspoon of salt. Okay. One teaspoon of table salt, okay? All right. So if you are hypertensive already, you are taking medications, and you want to reverse hypertension, mm. you have to limit your salt intake to 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. So that is around two-thirds teaspoons of salt, okay? So if you look at a, uh, at a, at a product, okay, mm. how do you know if it's low in sodium? Okay, so let's take a look at the same product, the same food item, which is the ground flax seeds. Okay. Okay? So... In order for you to know if the sodium is low, is take a look at the total calories of the food item and take a look at the sodium. If the sodium is less than the absolute number of the total cal of the total calories, then that is low sodium. Wow, this is so such a good tip. I never know when something is uh, low sodium or not. This is the first time actually I have a tip like this. Talk. So what we do is we compare the sodium. If it's lower than the calories, then it's very likely a low sodium, low sodium product. Yes. Wow, this is so helpful, everybody. Okay, so let's take a look at the at this food item. All right. So flax how, seeds. Yeah, for flax seeds, how much is uh how much calories is one serving? It's one hundred and sixty. One hundred and sixty. Okay. For sodium, 10. one serving is ten milligrams. Okay, so ten is less than one sixty. Obviously, so this is a low, low sodium, sodium food. food. Okay, healthy see? food. Whole foods. <laughs> Now, let's take a look at Lay's potato oh, chips. Oh, wow. See, it, is, it works. It works. This tip works. Yeah. Okay. Total calories of Lay's potato chips is 160. Sodium is 170 milligrams. Okay. So, obviously, the sodium content, 170 is more than 160, which is the total calories. So, this food item is actually very high in sodium or in salt. I like the next example that you're going to show because this is uh, something many of us use uh, in Philippines because especially when those of us who cook at home yes. we often buy ready-to-make broth mm -hmm. right uh, instead of uh, cooking the broth yourself yeah. you buy the ready-to-make broth and let's take a look at this one yeah this one has all all the keywords organic low sodium Vegetable, all right. <laughs> so is, you had this is something. Yeah, that you're, if and you the color buy. is green on the <laughs> packaging. I mean, uh, you would you would think that you are making the healthy choice yes. for your family. Yes. Uh, is this true, though? Yeah. Okay. So, is this true? Let's see. Okay. This is the nutrition facts of this food item. So, 
Is it low sodium? Take a look at the calories. Since it's broth, the calories will be very low. It's yes. Dead. Take a look at the sodium. It's 120. Wow. Okay, so this is actually very a very high sodium uh, product. Wow. Okay? And you know, if you are living, if you if, if you want to try to live healthy, this is one of the food items that you most likely will choose, mm. right? Okay. So please yeah. be wary of the of these things. Okay. I mean, I, I just compare this broth. Uh, one cup is this. I mean, one serving of this broth. Uh, compared to one serving of uh, laced potato chips, mm -hmm. it's the same amount of uh, yes. salt. Uh, very close, uh, 170 versus 120. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you drink a little bit more soup, or if you cook, if you use this broth, knowing the Asian style, we will still add salt. <laughs> we will add soy sauce, <laughs> soy sauce fish yes, sauce, yes, or some yes. sauce, right? Uh -huh. So that's really gonna make us uh, go over the limit. Wow, okay, that's, okay. that's that's so we are often misled. Yes. Uh, often Doc, so. yeah. why is it important to compare the calories to sodium? What if, what if we take something with a zero calorie, then even a little bit of salt will be high sodium. So yes. Uh, yes. is there a reason why uh, having calories mm. and then uh, sodium levels sort of they balance each other so that as long as you have more calories than sodium it is manageable okay so uh, the way the scientists or the researchers mm. did this is that uh, they base it on the total number of calories because that is the um, the total meal uh, that you will eat for the day let's yeah. say for example you are on a 2000 calorie uh, meal plan uh, per day right yes so if you only eat these food items you will definitely exceed your salt li limit intake mm. based just basing on the total number of calories however keep in mind that we have these limits so actually we can be flexible so it doesn't mean that okay this product is high in sodium then i should avoid this mm. no because you have to always keep in mind that there is a limit so if you are 2,300 milligrams of uh, sodium per day, right? Of course, you can still drink the vegetable broth. Yeah, because can, it's only 120. Right, it's only 120. But keep in mind, um, drinking a cup of broth, broth, that would be 120 milligrams of sodium. But it will not give you any calories. Yeah. So your body will right. make you make you drink another cup. Yes, and yes. And then yes. you still won't get the calories. Yes. Your body drinks a third cup, then suddenly your sodium content is very it's high. It's very high already. Okay. But of course, take a look, okay? Um, we have the limit, so you can adjust. So take a look at this. For a broth, one cup would be probably around in uh, more or less a normal person would would, would yeah would drink, drink one right broth, yes. no, one cup, hundred twenty milligrams. Okay. I, I understand now how they why why they this simple uh, guideline of calories less than sodium because you don't want to overeat, right? So you shouldn't be eating a four thousand calorie diet. So if you're only going to eat two thousand uh, calories. And your and if you're hypertensive, your your uh, sodium should be one thousand five hundred and below. So obviously, your sodium cannot be more than your calories. calories. Yes. That's just a simple. Reason. Because or else you will exceed immediately, and yeah. you know if you exceed immediately, you won't feel full because you only eat a small amount of food. In True. The first place, so right? now the last one, saturated fats. Okay, for saturated in Asia fats. we love our fats. Uh, yeah. yeah, we love to cook with. Cooking oil, yeah. yeah. So saute, deep frying, etc. Okay, but here's the thing. So always remember that saturated fats is the culprit for developing insulin resistance, for increasing your cholesterol, uh, specifically the LDL cholesterol or the, or the bad cholesterol, which uh, deposits uh, cholesterol in your blood vessels, causing it to block. Okay, for diabetes again, it uh, it worsens insulin resistance, so it makes your uh, diabetes worse. Okay. And for cancer patients, insulin resistance creates problem. How does for cancer patients? How does insulin resistance create? Yeah. Problem? Okay. So typically, um, for cancer, right, we always hear this concept that sugar feeds cancer cells. Mm. Okay, it's true. However, sugar also feeds healthy cells, and yes. you need sugar to live. Okay, because your brain is highly dependent on, on sugar. sugar. Okay, so it would be very difficult for your body to function if you go on a low carbohydrate or low sugar diet. Now, here's the thing. Um, it's very difficult to swim upstream. So we go we, we go with the flow. However, here's the thing that um, I want to teach highlight. you. I want to highlight. Okay, For insulin, we have to prevent insulin spikes more than blood sugar spikes. So it's very important that your insulin 
um, that your body is sensitive to insulin, okay? Because insulin spikes is the one that promotes tumor growth. Yes, the insulin-like factor, right? Yes. Yes. IGF-1 specifically. Mm. Okay, so this is the, one of the main reasons. And of course, saturated fats also um, increases the risk of cancer metastasizing. Okay, because saturated fats attaches to a, to a very specific receptor on the tumor cells that allows it to spread. multiply and spread. Wow, okay. okay. So, there how much uh, saturated fat should you be consuming every day? Mm. So, um, please listen very well because I will teach you on how to compute for this. Oh, this okay? is interesting. So, according to the American Heart Association, the limit of uh, saturated fats for for us is 5 to 6% of daily calories. Mm. So, how would you know <laughs> Okay, how much saturated fats should you be consuming? Okay, first you have to know how much calories should you be consuming every day. Okay, so how can you know? Please go to this link and compute for your daily calorie needs. Okay, mm. they have a calculator. Just put there your uh, your 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 uh, profile. Okay, and then you'll get your then number. you'll get your number. You'll get your uh, daily caloric needs. Now, please do it right now. And the Singaporean, me, will share with you a math hack on how to arrive at the 5%, alright? Very okay. easy, Very okay? Easy. okay? You take, for example, 2,000 calories. So, you divide it by 10, so they get 10%, right? So, that's very easy, just remove one zero. <laughs> okay, I'll move the decimal point. So, if your number of calories is 2,000, then it becomes 200. Now, that's 10%, you have it, you get your 5%, alright? So, it's a very simple hack. Move the decimal point one. So if it's 1,500 calories, you remove one zero or move the decimal point one, you get 150. Now, you just have 150. If your math is not that good, you probably say 70. Okay, but if your accurate is 75. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's very easy. So mm -hmm. all you need to know is how much 1,800 calories, remove one zero, 180. Half 180 is 90. So you can only take 90 grams of fat. Of fat. Okay. There um, we go. There we go. Okay, so 90 grams of uh, 90, 90 calories from saturated fats. That is your daily limit. Mm. Now, uh, I used a different value here. I use 6% because we love our fats. <laughs> okay, so I want the upper limit of, the, of their uh, recommendation. So, let's say for example, um, 2,000 calorie uh, daily requirement. So, 120 calories should come from saturated fats. Mm. So, how much is 120 calories? So we have to convert this into grams. Oh, there's still one more uh, yes, part. You have to divide by nine. Part. Yes. So be uh, because fat is nine calories per gram. So okay. we need the grams because um, when you read the nutrition labels, ah. it's in grams. <laughs> okay? okay. So we have to get it in terms of grams. So for this example, 120 divided by nine is 13 grams of saturated fats. For So for someone uh, with a 2,000 calorie daily requirement, 13 grams, only 13 grams should come from saturated fats. Okay. So uh, let me give you an example on what this looks okay, like. Alright, but before we do that, after hearing this, this is live, right? So I'm coming up with an immediate Singapore hack for you again, mathematics, okay? Very easy. The total number of calories you have divided by 10. So let's move one decimal point. Half it and then move one more decimal point again. So in this example, it'll be 2,000 will be divided by 10, 200, right? 200, half it is... 100, right? 100, remove move it one decimal point, which is on the, remove a zero, it becomes 10. So it's a bit lower than the 13 grams, but you don't need your calculator. Okay? Yeah, it's, uh, almost the same. it's almost the same, the same. It's, and it's safe amount, all right? So <laughs> divide by 10, half it, divide by 10 again, and that's the number of grams of saturated fat you can take based on your calories. All right, dog, let's go and take a look. Okay, at, so... Oh, this is the favorite. Many people ask us, is virgin coconut oil uh, healthy? And they often take one tablespoon or two tablespoons of it. Oh, this is really... Uh, okay, so this is really uh, a very interesting uh, product, okay? So coconut oil is actually very high in saturated fats, okay? So take a look at the nutrition facts. This is an actual product here, uh, manufactured here in the Philippines, okay? So... Um, this brand of virgin coconut oil has 12.6 grams of saturated fats per tablespoon. 
So one tablespoon is a normal 2,000 calories entire day limit. Yes, entire day limit. So once you take that one tablespoon, you cannot take any more fats or oils for the rest of the day. For the rest of the day, because anything in excess of this, that will already deposit in your blood vessels, that will worsen your insulin resistance, it might metastasize, it might cause for your cancer to metastasize. Okay? Wow, so um, just so that everybody has a uh, maybe better picture, because some of our viewers might say, you know, Doc, when I started taking virgin coconut oil, I felt good, right? Yeah, that's, I think, one of the reasons that could happen is that we're not saying that virgin coconut oil is not good. It, prob it does have its beneficial effects. But if you keep taking it, then you are taking in lots of saturated fat way beyond your uh, tolerance. So what will happen? Maybe six, six months down the line or even maybe sooner, maybe yeah. longer for someone, Correct. you're going to develop heart diseases. Correct. Right? Correct. So it's not saying that virgin coconut oil does not have its benefits, but just looking at how much saturated fats is in it, you realize if you take this for a long period of time, you may get well from some disease, but you will then develop your heart diseases okay. and, and diabetes yeah. and all that. And too. also you might be wondering, hey, I'm already on a plant-based diet, but I'm taking virgin coconut oil. Why isn't my cholesterol going down? Oh, See, it's because so of the virgin it's coconut oil. because of the virgin coconut oil, okay? So please be careful. Well, let's take a look. Here's a substitute for this. <laughs> wow, this is virgin olive oil, is it? Yes, this is extra virgin olive oil. So for extra virgin olive oil, take a look at how much saturated fat. Oh, I feel so much things. better because uh, when I fry, uh, when I, you know, saute my stuff, yeah. I do use like at least a tablespoon. So now I can use five tablespoons yes. a day. So you have... So that, that, that is actually fine. And part of it will actually be cooked away. So all the more, I, I could probably end up yeah. using so, seven tablespoons a day. Yes, uh, of course. And you know, olive oil is really very high in unsaturated fatty acids or polyunsaturated fatty acids, which is uh, the more beneficial type of fatty acids because that is omega-3, okay? So for this, one tablespoon of virgin coconut oil is actually two grams only. So if you have a limit of uh, 13 grams of saturated fats every day, six, okay, you can ha actually have six and you're still no problem, fine. You're still fine. And you have six tablespoons is quite a lot, right? For cooking. For cooking. It's, it's actually quite yeah, a lot. It's quite a lot. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, okay. uh, and, and, and you know, even if you fry something in it, you put six tablespoons, doesn't mean you eat six tablespoons because the food will probably only absorb two tablespoons or one tablespoon yeah. of the oil. Exactly. So you are you still have five tablespoons. Yeah. And, yeah. And probably a tablespoon will be left on the pan or on the plate, yes. right? <laughs> right. So there you go. Wow, Doc. So we covered the three important items that all uh, holiday uh, goers uh, and uh, this Christmas salt level, fiber level, and saturated fat levels. So remember these tips, we're gonna flash it up right now. Look at the fiber ratio, that's how you calculate this. Now look at the sodium, how do you know if something is low salt? There you go, okay, must be, sodium must be lower than the number of calories. And last but not least, here's how you know how much saturated fat you can take a day. And I have a Singapore math hack for you, divided by 10, divided by two, and then divided by 10. Okay, so 10, half 10, all right? And there we have it. I hope these three tips will help everyone choose better so that you can still enjoy your Christmas holidays. So once again, uh, I see the questions coming. People are going to ask about peanut oil, corn oil, and everything <laughs> again, Doc. Okay, so without further ado, uh, happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Doc. Merry Christmas, everyone. And, and let's go to our AMA.